Welcome to our British Air Gunning Show. Airheads coming to you for reasons I still don't quite understand from central Tel Aviv. Coming up, pie in the sky. Darren's out after young Brancher Rooks. Ah, this is heaven. Educating Essex, Roger has the latest ABC of HFT. First, Roy is back with our series Pellet Power and Performance, and this time there's a bit more poundage. Our last series of Pellet Power and Performance with Roy continues to attract tens of thousands of views a week. Roy's hands-on approach with pigeons, rabbits and, of course, the infamous FX boss shot on the fox skulls, which has once again been age-restricted by the YouTube powers that be, presumably because it shows cruelty to foxes, have proved informative and useful to airgun hunters. Well, in this series, we want to travel the same route, but in a different vehicle. This one hasn't just got go faster stripes, a spoiler and uprated suspension, it's got something bigger under the bonnet. Well, it's not even Christmas, but I have been inundated with new presents. So over the next couple of months, we're gonna be going out with my new FX Royale air rifle in FAC. We've got a, a brand new March scope to put on it. We've got a huge diving bottle supplied by Midland Diving Centre that's gonna keep us charged up for the whole way through. Crossman pellets, and we've got some really good sports match mounts to uh, attach the uh, march scope onto the air rifle. The other thing that we've got, and it's something that we've always wanted to play with properly, is a ballistics gel. And uh, hopefully, this is really going to sort of show up some of the comparisons um, between the FAC um, rated air rifles and the, the normal sub 12 foot pound air rifles that we play with. I've got to be honest, up until a couple of months ago, I really didn't see the niche for an FAC air rifle. But I, uh, since going out with um, Darren with his FX air rifles, it sort of sparked my interest a little bit with the FAC air rifles and I can start to see a bit more of a niche for them. And the thing that I really like about the FX range of FAC air rifles is the ability to turn down from FAC down to 12 foot pounds and then we can go even lower if we want to on the next setting down. So, very simple, very nice, very ergonomic, and I think we're going to have some serious fun. The weather is not ideal today, but next time we'll show the range of results Roy That's gets from putting the different Crossman pellets through the so. new rifle. It is surprising how much deviation there can be, but that's all part of the fun. Same as setting up any rifle, uh, whether that's a, an air rifle, a centrefire rifle, or a rimfire, you've got to find the ammunition that suits it for um, exactly what you're after doing, so see which one the rifle prefers. Roy will also look at the results of varying the FX's power and pellet choice using the brilliant clear ballistics gel. If you haven't seen it before, it really is an extraordinary material that makes real ballistic testing accessible to all shooters. And the best thing about it is you can use it again and again. So we have all the tools for more pellet power and performance. All we need now is for Roy to finish his magnum. They really should have more men doing those ads. Very seductive shooting and eating. Now, for someone who's more milkmaid than Magnum, it's David with hot air. This is hot air. A man who shot at a pigeon, missed and hit a man in a pub has been jailed for 17 months. Ali Ahmed expressed regret over the incident and said he'd been trying to silence a pigeon sitting in a tree outside his window. The sheriff at Perth Sheriff Court told Ahmed it should have been perfectly obvious that the pellet would end up in the beer garden of the local pub. Landlord Stephen McGraw was hit in the temple by the air pistol pellet and suffered minor injuries. Hawk Optics has a new look and a range of new products. These include improved versions of popular models such as the Panorama and Air Max Scope, as well as new products like the Vantage Scopes and Endurance ED binoculars. There's a new website at hawkoptics.com. The Nefta Classic has a new champion. Pepe Redondo won the North East Field Target Association competition. 
Celebrating its 25th anniversary this year, the Nefta Classic is a two-day event where competitors shoot a combination of 40 knockdown and 40 American silhouette targets. It was held at Emily Moore Field Target Club in West Yorkshire. Watch the full film on Air Arms TV. BSA Guns might turn its hand to shotguns. Here's BSA Simon Barron out close shooting last week and liking it. Well, I think it's something I've got to uh, put to towards my MD and uh, I think it could be uh, uh, back on track in a, in a couple of years, yeah. For the full film of his day, watch this week's Field Sports Britain. Daystate is blowing its trumpet about rifle accuracy. Using a Wolverine 303, Italian Giuseppe Scaglioni shot an officially judged 18mm group at 100 metres on an open air range. The Vermin Hunters TV charity weekend took place at Penkridge Air Rifle Club in Staffordshire. Organised by Cy Pittaway and Davy Thomas, it raised nearly £2,000 for soldiers' charities. And finally, a bird feeder designed to put off squirrels has been taken for a ride. The droll Yankee bird feeder has a motor that makes it spin when it detects an animal as heavy as a squirrel. This squirrel, however, learned that hanging on provides food for it and its friends, even if it does feel a bit dizzy afterwards. You are now up to date with hot air. Aiming for accuracy, targeting the truth. Thank you, David. Now it is the one and the only Roger Late. A lot of people come down here and they can't get a zero and they don't understand that actually there's a primary and secondary zero. So your gun, maybe at 10 yards, is bang on crosshairs, and at 40 yards, is bang on crosshairs, and they don't understand that. Because it's a parabolic curve, and obviously the line of sight intersects that, yeah, there's gonna be two points where it goes through, absolutely, on the crosshairs. A lot of people don't understand that. Also, another thing they do, they zero at 50 yards for some reason. It's up to them, of course, but personally, because I'm a competition shooter, I choose a 40 yard zero, so again, this is zeroed at 10 and 40 yards. So at 10 yards, you bang on crosshairs. At 40 yards, you bang on crosshairs. So it's all good to go. Right, let's see if we can hit some paper. Right, that shot was slightly right. So I'm gonna go two clicks left. Let's see if we can get that straight. Height-wise, it's fine. So this gun is zeroed now at 10 yards. It's also zeroed at 40 yards. I've just checked both zeros. What I need to do now is put paper out from 10 to 45 yards to make sure that I know exactly where that pellet's going to go, how it rises and falls on the reticle the whole way from 10 or 8 actually to 45 yards. Now I know at 10 yards it's bang on crosshairs and I know at 40 yards it's bang on crosshairs. So where's the highest point? The only way I'm going to find that out is shooting crosshairs at a dot at 8 yards, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. 35, 40, and 45. And at that point, you can see where the pellet goes up and then comes down. Now, this gun, the highest point in the trajectory is 27 yards. It's just obviously 25, it, it's just still climbing, but at 27 yards is exactly the highest point. So I know 10 crosshairs, 27, the very top of the trajectory, the very top actually of the reticle, and then at 45, it goes down, so 40 is on crosshairs and 45 is just underneath. And then we have to work out and write down our chart. So if we go into competition, you think, okay, that target is 28 yards. Is it going up or down? Well, it's actually coming down. At 35, still coming down. Ah, but what about 20 yards? Still going up. Now, the only way you're gonna learn that is at a facility like this, shooting all the ranges on and on and on and knowing exactly what your pellet does in relation to your scope. It's a really long thing to do, but it's a really good thing to do. And once you've learnt it, yeah, 
you write it down, or you have a CAD drawing like mine. As you can see, very concise. Move out the way, Stephen Hawking. Every day is a school day. Now, Darren and his airgun mad Dutch friends have been invited to shoot some late branches. One of the greatest advantages of hunting with an air rifle is that, within reason, you can shoot into the sky. Even though Darren and his friends from the Netherlands are checking Darren's FX Bobcat, Cyclone and March Scope are still on, they won't be quite as comfortable in a minute when we start shooting vertically at some branches. Young rooks taking to the wing. Yeah, we need to control them just because um, they are like a pest on, on, on game covers with the maize coming up. Um, spring crops with spring drilling and then when you get the milky um, flattened uh, barley and, and corn they're, they're terrible on that as well so we, we need to get the numbers down a little bit. Professional deer stalker Paul Childerley invited the guys over because of where the rookeries are. We've got a couple of rookeries um, but they're both in really awkward spots so uh, hence we're going to do them with the air to start with um, just to, so we didn't upset it's like you know the, the local people and, and people like seeing the rooks you know they're, they're nice to watch and nice to see but isn't it bad luck to clear the rooks they leave a rookery yeah yeah it's uh, destined to doom <laughs> so i hope a few will leave today <laughs> we are a bit late for the best of it some of the rooks have enough strength to stay airborne but not all branches as the name suggests sit on branches and darren has to be patient to get a clear shot through the foliage a lot of leaf on these trees, it is threading the eye of the needle, this one. It pays off and we start getting some birds falling. Can I flop? Uh. <laughs> I must admit, you've got very resonant wood, it's a lovely plop when it hits the ground. So has Darren shot at these uncomfortable angles before? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, not on such a warm day as this, I think we've left this a couple of weeks late. But really good fun. But it's amazing because because um, we're shooting vertical. You don't have to allow for any um, elevation change at all. You just aim dead on. With us today is Crazy Ray and his son Dan from Holland. They're not allowed to hunt live quarry at home and come over to the UK twice a year for some sport. So is he enjoying this particular air gunning experience? This is heaven. I'm not going to say you that this is much better than something else, if you understand, but... It's very near. <laughs> that will be a yes then. You're not allowed to shoot on any pest or whatever. Uh, the only thing what you can do, you can shoot on your own property on targets. And uh, yeah, that's a little bit of shame. And uh, if, if you can see what the pest controllers over here does, a very good job, you know, and yeah, we are very happy with it over here. And I'm thinking about to live in England. <laughs> Darren is now in a rhythm and even has his own rook shooting guide. As you can see, I've got a little bit of perspiration and it's, um, I've never been so contorted. You know, I'm the thick end of 50. You get me laying about in these damp woods like this. The shots through the March scope mounted eagle eye look very impressive. So much so that Ray has gone and bought a new March of his own. Well, you know, I was quite interested in that. So yeah, I bought me a little present. <laughs> What sort of ranges are we talking today? 20, 26, 28 yards, tops of these trees is all it is. Um, but like I said earlier, you know, the huge advantage we've got because you've got me shooting absolutely vertically. You don't have to worry about hold over, hold under. Um, just aim straight at them and the pellet goes dead straight. Within a couple of hours, we have a dozen rooks perfect for a pie. But even Crazy Ray isn't that crazy. Now for the pick of air gunning on YouTube, it is air streaming. Charlie Jacoby here, this is my roundup of the best air gunning on YouTube. The ever popular hunter's vermin is in a farmyard after magpies and jackdaws. The corvids here have learned to fly into the cattle shed to eat the meal set out for the livestock, and he's learned to shoot them. SRS Power is doing a spot of early evening pest control with his air arms S310 and 22 and pitting it against his browning T-Bolt 22 rimfire. Keep up with the British field target scene with this film, posted by airgunreview.tv. It is the BFTA GP2 at Tordvale FT and ARC, a very friendly shoot. 
Dude. Now to America. Air Guns World is taking a 357 Benjamin Bulldog and 25 Hatson B265 at Grand Squirrel Hunting in Oregon. Rick Utzler of Air Gun Web scouts a possible hunting location in Arizona. If the cameraman had gone with Rick's mate Cecil, he would have filmed a cottontail stalk. This is Jurassic. A major agricultural pest in Puerto Rico is the iguana, so American Air Gun Hunter shoulders his Hatsons in 3 and 35 calibers to see what he can do. The Air Gun Hunter sticks to more traditional American quarry with pellet gun turkey hunting television episode 9, taking his Remington Nitro Piston SS in 2 2 out in California. And finally, ever wonders what happens when you shoot an ordinary fully charged mobile phone battery with an air gun pellet? Well, this does. All that electricity has got to go somewhere. Click on the links to watch the videos, or you will find them in this film's description if you would like to send in a video for air streaming. Ping me the link, charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. If you don't like those, how about this from Air Arms TV? Kai App Brin looks at the Air Arms S510, a sporter that makes quiet precision its motto. Air Arms 400 series gets a makeover with side lever cocking and loading system presenting each pellet to the barrel. You can cycle the S510's action without taking your eye from the scope. The S510's balanced firing valve meters the power, giving you consistency with each shot. Hand-built and finished in a combination of high-gloss and semi-matte metalwork, it features a fully shrouded barrel, threaded shroud for optional external moderator, adjustable two-stage trigger, ten-shot magazine and built-in manometer. Click on the link on the screen to watch Kai's review. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. I still get all the exotic locations. We're back in a couple of weeks. Goodbye.